Excellent presentation. Okay, uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, this talk uh, will be combined, or will, will be mix of two presentations. Ah, okay. Uh, because one of the speakers uh, was unable to come here, so I try to uh, explain in details uh, what all the work is about, and um, uh, it will be better to uh, see a general picture of uh, uh, this phenomenon uh, called uh, ejecta. So, and uh, before we begin, we consider uh, uh, what the term ejecta means. And <coughs> so first, uh, it was uh, uh, found in shock compression experiments. So when the uh, target with micrometer-sized grooves uh, was uh, shocked uh, with uh, uh it uh, was uh, shocked, uh, there uh, was found that uh, ejector particles, uh, so, uh, uh <coughs> so in experiments it was seen that the particles appear uh, near the free surface and uh, so they were rather small, and these particles and uh, uh, the phenomena um, uh, was called ejecta, but the phys underlying physics were not uh, understood at these times. Uh, but uh, uh, later it was found that this group, uh, from these grooves appear uh, spikes uh, or uh, jets uh, um, which uh, propagate with very uh, big velocities uh, from the free surface and involve uh, material around them into the flow. And uh, at the late stages, uh, these jets uh, developed and uh, uh, fra uh, experienced fragmentation into particles uh, which are seen in the experiments. Uh, in the last decade, uh, the theory of ejecta phenomena uh, was based on the uh, became based on the rekhmeyer meshkov instability uh, and uh, why it is so uh, it, it is can it was considered as a special case of rekhmeyer meshkov instability in solids uh, for this particular case uh, the density of uh, medium a is much bigger than density for medium b uh, so that the output number is approximately minus one and uh, uh, the researchers begin to uh, use spike bubble terminology for the ejector pro process and uh, these jets uh, are called spikes and uh, there appear bubbles um, so uh, which is uh, similar to the original Rechmeyer-Mishkov instability in liquids or gases uh, but uh, another uh, special a uh, case for the Rechmeyer-Mishkov instability in ejecta is that interface grooves are <coughs> micrometer-sized and uh, these spikes are very fast. Uh, they move with uh, velocities of several kil kilometers per second. And uh, uh, in this uh, talk, I would like to uh, answer uh, several questions about how, uh, what experimental techniques uh, developed to measure ejector properties and um, uh, how to recover ejector properties using optical measurements um, and uh, what uh, supporting information may be obtained with simulation uh, for the ejector phenomenon. And first we begin with experiments. So, uh, Initially, uh, <coughs> uh, 
the, the first experiments uh, uh, were uh, developed to measure the ejector mass distribution. Uh, to uh, obtain that distribution, uh, James Essie developed the following technique. So he used uh, a sample with grooves, which provides ejector under shock loading, and the thin foil of, uh, for example, aluminum or other materials, uh, which velocity were measured with uh, interferometer. And uh, uh, so he obtained, uh, uh, when the ejector uh, hits the thin foil, it begins to uh, accelerate, uh, and by gathering more and more ejector, it accelerates uh, more. And uh, the, the velocity change is uh, seen with the interferometer and uh, provided uh, uh, the, the uh, picture like that. So uh, using simple equations uh, from the uh, velocity, uh, from the acceleration of thin foil, we can uh, recalculate it to the mass distribution as it arrives to the, this thin foil. Uh, but uh, for some experiments, it was uh, uh, thin foil is very, um, uh, so it can be distracted by the ejector. So that um, another technique was also developed by James Essay later with the thick uh, plate. Uh, so when ejector hits this plate, uh, the wave propagates to the free surface and also measured by interferometer. Uh, there appear uh, more complex uh, wave profile, but it also can be recalculated to the mass distribution of uh, uh, ejector. So it was first uh, experiments uh, which uh, give uh, the researchers uh, uh, the mass distribution for ejector. And uh, now <coughs> it is done uh, quite better with uh, newer techniques. Uh, for example, uh, piezo uh, probes uh, are used to measure uh, the ejector which uh, uh, gathered uh, there. And uh, also we can calibrate uh, X-ray uh, data to measure the density of ejector cloud. Uh, directly, uh, and there are results uh, presented on these uh, graphs. Uh, we can see that the uh, piezo uh, diagnostics and X-ray diagnostics uh, provide very close uh, mass distribution profile. Uh, next, uh, uh, interesting uh, property of object is its velocity. To measure velocity, uh, experimental uh, in experiment, uh, it, uh, the photon or laser Doppler velocimetry is used, uh, and uh, uh, there I show two uh, sit experimental setups, uh, which first I call idealized because uh, there are very precise grooves, and uh, uh, the ejector ejecting uh, is made into vacuum. Uh, so uh, the obtained uh, ve uh, time velocity uh, profiles with photon Doppler velocimetry uh, can uh, easily resolve the velocities of spikes or the top of the jets and uh, the velocity of bubbles uh, between uh, jets. Uh, but uh, <coughs> more realistic experiments, which are made by uh, Fedorov and colleagues in uh, 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 <coughs> so first they use samples with imperfect uh, grooves, so uh, they are quite uh, randomly distributed uh, uh, across the surface, and uh, uh, ejection is made into air. So first we can see that uh, ejector cloud has a distribution in velocities and um, it is decelerated by the air. Uh, so that 
at the late stages, uh, the ejected particles can be overtaken by the free surface. Uh, and uh, to uh, interpret these results, uh, our colleagues uh, developed a theory which will be discussed later. So, uh, and another experimental uh, setup is developed to measure fragment size distribution in a very precise way. So, uh, it, the technique is called ultraviolet holography. Uh, and uh, in these experiments, uh, on the authors uh, Sorensen and his colleagues obtain picture like that. So here we can see uh, the dark dots which are ejected particles and near to the free surface we can see that uh, how the uh, planar jet is distracted uh, uh, during uh, the jet's uh, propagation. Um, <coughs> from these pictures uh, they uh, construct uh, uh, size distributions for the particles and uh, the size distribution presented here and the average diameter for these particles is about uh, four, five micrometers. Um, another uh, setup for the uh, fragment size distribution me measurement uh, were de developed by another group of uh, researchers and uh, uh, the setup is following. Uh, in the uh, center of uh, uh, sample, there are uh, periodic grooves. Uh, and after shock propagation, uh, they eject a cloud appears and laser. Um, uh, so uh, incident laser wave uh, splits uh, by the different angles according to me theory. And uh, with uh, the angle of uh, scattered uh, waves, uh, so they can measure also the size distribution for particles. Uh, both uh, setups are provide uh, uh, particle very close particle sizes, but uh, the, uh, these techniques uh, are not. Uh, uh, useful for measuring ejector in complex uh, setup, uh, so I mean uh, air and uh, in, uh, sur surface with imperfect grooves. Uh, and uh, to uh, cope with that, uh, the optical model is developed by um, our colleagues. So they uh, started with uh, the idea of understanding PDV in a more detailed way. Uh, so uh, they consider uh, ejector cloud uh, as a set of particles and uh, an incident wave uh, scattered uh, experience multiple scattering in this ejector cloud. And uh, the reflected wave uh, consists of uh, this reference wave uh, uh, and uh, some of reflected waves and the interference of different waves. The resultant picture is, uh, looks like that. And uh, they ask, uh, is it possible to extract fragment size distribution from that uh, me measurements? And uh, <coughs> to do that, they develop, uh, first they develop uh, ejector cloud model. So they introduce some uh, parameters of ejector cloud. It's uh, mass velocity distribution, which already discussed with experiments, uh, transport optical thickness, transport scattering coefficient, which is connected uh, closely to mass velocity distribution. And uh, the relations between them are shown on this slide. So uh, they use also some uh, function to fit the experimental data for mass distribution. And um, uh, they also use me theory to estimate uh, transport optical thickness and uh, recalculate uh, 
these uh, known parameters to transport scattering coefficient. Uh, after that, uh, they use uh, transport equation for intensity to uh, calculate uh, the scattered wave uh, through the parameters of the ejector cloud, uh, which which they introduce here. Uh, so they uh, fit the parameters of their ejector cloud model to uh, describe this uh, uh, wave, uh, this uh, uh, wave, this wave. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, of course it is a rather difficult equation and they use uh, some simplification and uh, <coughs> uh, so, but the, uh, at, uh, at this slide, uh, there are some results they achieved with their model. First uh, uh, is uh, the influence of absorption. So if, if absorption is rather high uh, uh, in comparison to scattering, um, they uh, find that the velocities which have, so um, omega s is the velocity of the free surface here. And um, uh, so the um, particles with lower velocities which for which uh, lower frequencies are correspond. Uh, uh, with the uh, high absorption, these uh, small velo uh, velocities uh, cannot be, uh, uh, are not introduced in the scattered wave. So we cannot uh, describe them uh, with if the ejector cloud has very uh, high uh, absorption. And another is the optical thickness. So if the optical thickness is uh, rather high, we cannot see the free surface uh, position, uh, free surface velocity uh, uh, behind the ejector cloud. And uh, <coughs> uh, they also um, provide two uh, data recovery options from ejector cloud first is uh, with the known size distribution uh, they and the PDV uh, results, they can obtain mass distribution for the jet by fitting parameters uh, for uh, scattered waves. And another option is uh, using also PDV image and mass distribution. Uh, they can reconstruct fragment size distribution uh, and this is uh, what is done by mo more difficult experiments. Uh, uh, so the first uh, option is size to mass distribution uh, is already obtained. So they uh, take, for example, a window at the given time here uh, by frequencies and this uh, um, are shown in details here on this uh, picture. Uh, the wave uh, distribution uh, at different times. So they uh, fit their model parameters uh, to describe this um, uh, uh, to describe this uh, uh, field distribution and uh, so the recovered uh, parameters for transport uh, coefficient are given here. So we can see that <coughs> uh, at first, uh, uh, at uh, earlier times, uh, it, uh, ejected particles have uh, a bigger velocities and with the uh, time, uh, the velocities decreased and uh, uh, the mass uh, uh, gathered uh, 
are near to the free surface. So which corresponds the experimental data. So we can see even from this picture that uh, particle velocities are decelerated. And uh, next option, uh, so to use mass distribution for uh, calculation of uh, size distribution with that model, uh, they uh, asked us to provide uh, this mass distribution from simulation. And uh, <coughs> so next we will, uh, we'll, I'll show how uh, we do that. And uh <coughs> at first we uh, simulated uh, experiments which I uh, talked about earlier uh, and uh, said that it's idealized setup. So we used two methods for uh, calculation, smooth particle hydrodynamics and molecular dynamics, which are meshless and uh, uh, well uh, correspond this uh, problem. Uh, so for this particular test, we obtained uh, a good agreement between experimental and uh, calculated velocities. Uh, the problem for molecular dynamics is that on very on ra rather small sizes, uh, which are close, uh, in which are about uh, 100 nanometers, uh, we can see that at the end of the jet, and the, at the end of the jet appears a drop uh, due to surface tension effects, which slows the uh, velocity of jet by moving uh, towards free surface. Uh, so it can be seen on this picture that uh, molecular dynamics velocities are smaller than a uh, smooth particle. Uh, <coughs> so, but in general, uh, the picture is uh, quite similar for both methods of simulation. And uh, using these methods, we also uh, try to uh, construct mass distribution along the uh, ejector cloud. But uh, we can see from there that uh, mass distribution along the jet has uh, at the end of the jet, uh, jet there is a rim uh, um, increase of mass at the uh, tip of the spike. But uh, if we consider experiments, there is uh, no uh, rim and um, so uh, to uh, <coughs> uh, demonstrate uh, what the problem with that, uh, we uh, tried to simulate uh, a, a surface which has uh, not precise uh, perturbation amplitude, but it is, uh, there is some randomness in the perturbation of amplitude of uh, grooves. And uh, here is, oh, I'm sorry. Here is simulation of that um, surface which have randomness in groups, and we uh, clearly see now that uh, some jets have uh, bigger velocities, some have smaller velocities, and uh, to construct the uh, mass, uh, to realistic mass distribution, we have to uh, account not uh, a single jet, but the ensemble of jets with uh, different, uh, which appear from different uh, groups. Uh, but uh, this simulation is uh, quite big and quite uh, complex to provide for any kind of surface. So we uh, develop a more simple uh, approach. So we do for example, three simulations at the different angles of uh, groove, uh, opening an angles of groove. And uh, first we have found that uh, spike velocity grows linearly with uh, the angle of uh, groove. And uh, uh, next uh, we obtain mass di distributions for these uh, jets and uh, apply analytical fit for them. So after that, we uh, obtain uh, the parameters for this 
analytical approximations and interpolate them uh, between these angles. Uh, next. Uh, uh, so with that uh, fitting parameters, we can obtain any uh, mass distribution, mass dis distribution for any jet in the between uh, the boundary angles. And uh, when we apply for this ensemble of jets uh, averaging using normal distribution, for example, we obtain uh, that uh, mass profile which already uh, do not have uh, rim at the end of the jet. And uh, it looks uh, closer to the experimental one. Uh, and so we came to conclusion. Uh, in this uh, work, uh, uh, the ejector and its uh, parameters are discussed. Uh, uh, the ejector and the how to obtain its parameters I discussed in details, uh, but uh, uh, we demonstrated that for some uh, setup, I mean uh, the complex setup when the surface has uh, randomness in groups and there is an error uh, in the uh, where the ejector is moving. So uh, we, uh, for that, uh, the optical uh, model uh, developed uh, to obtain uh, mass distribution or particle size distribution directly from uh, PDV uh, diagnostics. <coughs> and uh, also uh, using molecular dynamics and smooth particle hydrodynamics, we demonstrated that uh, jet velocities and mass distributions uh, are obtained very close to experimental ones and combining two methods together, uh, we can uh, obtain uh, particle size distribution uh, of ejector cloud using uh, PDV measurements and uh, uh, simulations. Uh, but uh, in simulations, we have also introduced uh, an approach uh, of how to uh, how to simulate a realistic mass distribution uh, for the surface which have randomness in groups. And uh, these results uh, will be further used for the optical model to find uh, particle size distribution. So thank you for your attention. Yeah, uh, what is the different, uh, different uh, length of this pipe? Because the initial phase is the same. Yes. What is the reason? Uh, different length? Uh, different length, yes. Uh, because so uh, there is some uh, can I stop? <coughs> Uh, there is some randomness in groups, so you can see that there is um, a, sm a smaller amplitude of groove, and there is higher. So from that uh, groove, the sp uh, spike moves with uh, bigger velocity uh, than from that groove, and that is the reason. Uh, yes, there exist experiments which can measure um, temperature of ejector cloud, uh, but uh, we do not consider them uh, here. But uh, the, the ex one experiment, I know that uh, it exists where they with um, uh, infrared camera, they measure 
you check the cloud temperature.